All right, so today we're continuing our playlist on Chrome DevTools. If you're looking for a copy of that playlist, it's down in the description. Today we're focusing on the sources panel. We're talking about breakpoints, log points, conditional breakpoints, all the things that take us beyond just the ability to console log stuff. So I've got my same basic page here. I've added a UL here, an unordered list in the middle of the page where I'm going to load some data in my script. When my DOM content loaded event fires, I'm going to call my init function. My init function is going to create a request object, pass it to another function. That function is going to do a fetch command and then add the items into that list. And using the add items function to add the actual list items. So that's, that's about it. That's all the page is doing. So when it loads, this list right here is being generated by the JavaScript based on the results of a fetch call. Okay. So we have our console and we know from the previous videos in this series that we can use all kinds of console commands to write stuff out, but there's better things that we can do. There's more advanced things that we can do that are targeted to the code that we're writing. One of those is here. If I add this command debugger, what I am doing is I'm creating a breakpoint. I'm creating a point in my code and I'm asking the browser, when you get to this point, please pause the JavaScript. It's kind of like doing async await. We're going to pause the script right here and we can decide what we want to do at this point. We can look at the value of variables at this point. So back here in the browser, there it is. So because I had this dev tools already open, it jumped to the sources panel for me. Now, if I close this, that's gone. I refresh. Nothing's happening here. There's the page is loading. It's running. There's, there's nothing interfering with the script. When I open the dev tools right here, you can see I'm on the console. If I refresh, it jumps to debugger. So let me open this so we can start looking at these in a little bit more detail. Let's do it like that. There we go. All right. So here is my breakpoint in the code, my injected breakpoint, the point where I'm saying, Hey, I want to pause the code here. So if I want to look at the values of variables, I can do that. Like right here, data, I can mouse over it and it tells me, there you go. That's the value of data right now. And it says data is an array with 10 items inside of it. Users. What is that? There you go. That's what users is. Now, scope, this panel down here for the script that I'm currently working in, we've got things that are in the global scope. So add items, that's my function. Alert, that's the window.alert method. So all the stuff that's built in, plus things that are on the main timeline, the, in the main scope in my code, init and get data and add items and this event listener, those are all in the global scope. In the local scope, that is, where is the code right now? Well, it's where I paused it, right here, debugger. So right now I'm inside of this function right here. That is my local scope. Inside of that function, what are the variables that I have? Data and users. So we can look at the function that we're paused inside of. Okay. Over here, this side panel, this in the sources panel, this tells me all of the things that make up the current page that's loaded in the browser. So for this origin, what we have is an index.html, main.js, main.js and the main.css, React DevTools. So I have the extension React DevTools, which is loading. There's a script that it puts in here. So inside the build folder, we have it right here. These things are part of the React DevTools. Now we can toggle these things. So we can add it to the ignore list. We can remove it from the ignore list. And what this means is if you're ever doing something that has scripts with multiple sources, so I've got my script, I've got two different JavaScript libraries that I'm bringing in, those will show up here. And if I want to clean up the console, if I want to clean up what's happening inside of here, if I want to clean up the call stack and not have to look at things that are happening inside of there, well, 
then I can ignore those things so they don't show up here. They're, they're muted, they're hidden from me, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it really helps to clean up your code. Here's another example. Viewer.js. This is the DevTools script that's running. I don't want this thing to show up in my stack. I don't want to see all kinds of errors and messages happening in here. So I can do the same thing. I can add this particular script to the ignore list. So now this thing's grayed out. It's ignored. In my call stack, I'm not going to see any messages from there just helping us really narrow down where the problems are in our code. I'm sure you've come into situations where you've called a function which has in turn called something in the library and you're not getting the problem with your code. You're seeing that there's an error somewhere in the library, but really the problem is the data that you've passed to that library and you want to see what your code is doing, not what the library is doing to be able to solve this problem. So the call stack down here in the bottom, because I've paused at this point, this is going to tell me, the call stack is going to tell me exactly where this breakpoint is. I am inside of an anonymous function, which, yes, I am right here. This arrow function has no name. It is an anonymous function. And this anonymous function is inside of a promise.then. And it was called by get data. And if I scroll up here, sure enough, get data was the thing that initiated the fetch, which called this then, which got to my breakpoint. And the init function is what called get data. And it tells me what line two, line four in main.js, line 13 in main.js. So line four called this function. And then I got down to line 13 inside of get data. There's the function being called by the promise dot then. And then the anonymous that's the breakpoint right here. I'm inside the anonymous function on line 16. So the call stack helps you trace back through your code to see the sequence with, that things were called upon. Okay, great. Watch lets us add variables. So here's a couple that I put in myself. So first name and UID. Right now, these have no values. Inside this data map function, yeah, there's variables inside of this anonymous function, but up here, those variables are gone. They have no value. So I don't want to write another debugger statement necessarily. Maybe once I got in here, I've decided, oh, I really need to track and see what's happening here. I'm going to add breakpoints here in the tools. So just clicking on this line, I'm adding a breakpoint on data.map. So let's refresh this now. There we go. Just had to refresh a couple times. So now I'm back to this point. I haven't got to my debugger line. You'll see that the code has paused on line 14, where I added the breakpoint, line 14. In my watch, still don't have values for these because I'm right here. I'm at the map. I'm about to call this function. Now these things come into play right here, these buttons. This first one, it's a play pause button. This one is basically saying, all right, forget about whatever breakpoint I had here. Just start the code running. So if I do that, there we go. It stops on my debugger. I say, forget that again. And it runs through the whole script. If I refresh this again, I want to reload the page. Pause it again on this point. I don't want to skip it entirely. I actually want to get into this function and see what's going on. So we can use here, step over next function call. So all right, there's a breakpoint, and then I've got a function call. I want to skip over that and get to the next line of code. But the key is here that I'm stepping through the code. Step into the next function. So my line of code is going to call another function. I don't want to skip over the function. I want to actually go into it and step through the code line by line. Step out of the current function. So I've paused. I'm inside of a function. I'm stepping through it. I, okay, maybe it's inside of a loop inside that function. I don't want to wait through all that. Just, okay, let's finish the function and get out of here. And then this one, the simplest step. So I click this. Hey, look, in watch, I now have a value. And that means that what I've done is I've actually gone into the first call of this function by the map method. And I can just keep stepping through here. And we can see that I'm getting 
two things. So the call to map and then the return from map. That's why I'm seeing this twice here. So I can just keep stepping through. I go through all 10 values and now I'm out and I'm to my debugger. And again, I can step to the next line. See, this one would have just run to the end of the code, but the step moves to the next line in code. So if you ever want to look at the values and slowly step through your code, we can do that. There we go. Now we're calling add items. We got to debugger, then we were here, and then it actually jumped into that function, add items. So we can look and see what this array is. We can look at this element to see what it is. And we can keep stepping. Again, we're in a map. We're looping through the array that was passed into add items. Again and again and again. Now here, item ID, item name. Those are things inside my local scope. See, here's in my local scope, inside this function, there's an object called item. It's got a property called UID. If I open this up, there's UID and there's name. And here, there's a typo that I've noticed now. My data had something called UID, but I was referencing a property called item.id. It's not an error, it's a typo, but I'm able to notice this because it's showing me the values in here. So in my code, I know, okay, I'm gonna have to go back and change this to be UID. There we go. And now I can step through these again. And now we can see we've actually stepped into the script here, which is the one that the live server is injecting. So the live server has injected something inside of here. So we can, if we want, say, you know what? I don't want to necessarily pay attention to these things. So I'm going to add this to my ignore list. Okay. So I don't want to see debug messages or anything from inside of there. I don't need that one as well. All right, so let's go back into our code and change that one line right here. Should be UID. There we go, right to the end and refresh the page. There we go. So I'll turn off that one breakpoint. I'm going to remove the debugger line that I had here. Let's or pause, so let's run it through. Refresh, yes, okay, it's commented out. We don't have a breakpoint. There's a couple of other points that we can add inside of here. So breakpoint, that's the one where I just click to toggle like this. If I right click, you can see there's two other points here. Add a log point or a conditional breakpoint. So conditional breakpoint is, I wanna pause here based on this condition. So if uh, data dot length equals 10, there we go. So it's an orange one now with a question mark on it. This is a conditional breakpoint. So it's only going to pause at this point if the data arrays length value is equal to 10. So if I refresh the page, it did, it stopped it. So if I come in here, remove that, and we're going to add another one in here, conditional breakpoint, and we'll say if data.length equals nine. There we go, now my conditional breakpoint is only pause here if it's equal to nine. Under the end, refresh the page, and it's not paused. So yes, this is still shown because we still have that breakpoint, but it has not paused the code for us to start looking at things. And then the other one is, let's put one right here. All right, and our log message, we can just write out, let's say users, that variable. So we'll say users, users. There we go. So there's our breakpoint, but this is a log point. We refresh the page. There we go, it ran. Nothing's paused, but it does mean that here there is users. And we get the little pink arrow here saying that 
this was a log point. Now you can write out whatever variables you want, but I just wrote out the array users. So there we go. This variable right here, users, is what we're writing out. All right, now a few other things that we've got down here at the bottom. Some breakpoints that we're not inserting using debugger or by clicking on this. You can just say, hey, I want to pause whenever there's an exception, whether it's caught or uncaught. So anytime an error basically is happening. Um, you can say pause on caught exceptions. So right here, I'm throwing an error, but I'm catching it down here. So normally that wouldn't pause the execution of the code. That wouldn't do anything to interrupt the flow of your page because you're handling the error. But I can also pause the code at this point. I can say, yeah, okay, I threw an error. So I want to be able to look at that. Right here, any XHR fetch breakpoints. So this is a list. There's only the one, uh, one item in this list. Basically, anytime there's a fetch call, I want to pause the execution of my code. So there we go. I refresh the page. I'm paused on the fetch command. So right here, this is the URL that I fetched. So I'll remove that, continue running. We've got other things in here, DOM breakpoints uh, that don't have anything set up right now. The event listener breakpoints. This one's quite useful. So DOM mutation, you want to listen for DOM content loaded. You want to know when that event happens. Okay, fine. There we go. I've got it. And it paused when that event happened. So we were at this point in our code because this fired and it called init. So the init function is starting to run, but we paused it at that point in the execution because we added this breakpoint. So it stopped it for us so we can took a, take a look at the variables, take a look at the code. And you can basically find anything that you want. All the page load and unload and navigation events, they're all inside of here. Keyboard events, geolocation, whatever it is that you're looking for, you're going to be able to find I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to find anything that you want or anything that you need down here. Content security policy violation. So if you've got a meta tag or it's in the headers, you want to find out, you know, okay, pause if there was a problem with that. So we've got lots of things that we can use to pause the code. We've got these controls to continue stepping through the code. We can ignore parts of the code and other scripts that are included. So we don't have those pausing our code. We don't have those showing up in our call stack. And we can add as many variables that we want to watch for. We can look inside the global and the local scope. Tons of stuff you can do. So I hope that opens up your mind a little bit to the things that you can do with your code that are going to help you find the errors that you're, that you're having in your code. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I answer whatever I have time for. A copy of this code is linked to down in the description in a code gist, as well as a link to the rest of this playlist for the Chrome DevTools. And as always, thanks for watching.